Let's take a look now at subdivisions and subdivision surface modifiers and what this means while we work with scenes in both DAS Studio as well as other 3D applications. So subdivision is the process of having one surface, like a polygon, be subdivided into multiples so that more geometry is created. And that can happen via different algorithms. You can, this mathematical process that you can use it, and you can do it in different ways. And the earliest mention of this was actually a, kind of an invention, you could say, by Edwin Catmull and Jim Clark as far back as 1978. You may have heard of the term Catmull-Clark subdivision before. There are others, but that's the most widely used, I suppose. Today, this, there's actually a library that can be used by 3D applications that is called Open Subdiv. It's a project governed by Pixar, and they kind of write this library. They kind of renamed it from Catmull Clark to Catmark in recent years. I'm pretty sure it's almost the same thing, but, you know, over the course of so many years, I think other things have crept in, so I, that's, that's probably what it is. I don't have exact details on it, only that we do work with them literally anywhere and everywhere. Let me have a look in Das Studio and show you what this means as a practical example. I've got my Genesis 8.1 male character standing in, but before we deal with him, let me go and create myself a sphere primitive right now. I'll go bring that in with the defaults, and here it is. There it is, the sphere. Now, if you look really closely on these edges, you can see that these are flat. So really, the circle isn't really a circle. They are segments here, and if I'm far enough away, I might not care, but if I'm close in there somewhere, I know that this isn't a circle. There are literally here straight lines and that kind of approximates a circle. Let me show you the geometry. If I go and switch my viewport over from filament over to wire texture shaded or wire shaded, either one will work fine, then I can see all these lines here. And each of these lines here is a polygon. So anything like each of, the, each of these squares is a polygon. And that is making up our object. It's the same with my Genesis guy here. So he's made up of these things here. But in his case, there's just much more geometry that's going on. So, you know, we'll stick with the sphere to look at a very simple example here. Now, if I wanted to have a sphere that has a higher resolution, then a 3D modeling app could go ahead and literally subdivide this. So that would happen by cutting each of these squares into four squares. So one subdivision level means I'm going to up my geometry by a factor of four. So I'm going to make this four times more dense to get one level of subdivision in there. But then you can imagine these lines that I see at the end here, they now have a point in the middle, so it'll be more accurate. It'll be the curve that is being described here by the object can be drawn in much more detail. And we can do this in Das Studio as well with something called a subdivision surface modifier. So there's two things to this puzzle. If you're building 3D objects in, a, in something like Blender, you might sometimes want to subdivide your object because you need more geometry to sculpt in more detail or to build in more detail in there. The way we use this in Das Studio is that we have, I'll just call it a base resolution or a low resolution object and we want to add subdivision at the end just before we render so that my object appears more high res than it actually is. This cuts down on computer resources while we work with it, but it also cuts down on file size and it has a lot of other advantages. So if I, if you imagine, if I wanted to have this as a really high res sphere, it'll be like one with 5 million polygons and that's like 50 megabytes on my hard drive, whereas this is like a few kilobytes. So that's one advantage. And then of course, memory consumption is the other advantage. So, but in Das Studio, the way this works is that we have this thing called the subdivision surface modifier, and we can create one on any object ourselves if one isn't already applied. Usually when you have clothing and we have characters, they're already in place, but in this case, my sphere doesn't have one, and I can go and make one happen under Edit, Object, Geometry, Convert to Sub-D. That's what will make that happen. Actually, before I do that, let me just go and have a look on the parameters tab under mesh resolution here. There's this thing that's now called base resolution and nothing else. So I don't have anything that I can I can do here. But if I go and do this under edit object geometry convert to sub D, watch what happens. I get a lot of other options here and I get this drop down menu that says I can switch now between base res and high res. And if I look at my sphere in the viewport, look what happens there. If I go and switch to base res, I'm back to my sphere that I can I can already count the edges here. But if I go and switch this to high res, then my sphere looks a lot cleaner and a lot rounder, which is kind of what I want, isn't it? So if we look closely, this wire texture shaded view is now drawing me kind of a 
black line around each real polygon and a light gray line where these implied polygons are. Can you see that here? These are in the middle. Those are the ones that are implied by the subdivision surface modifier. I think if I can go do this, yeah, perfect. We can actually see it here. That's perfect. So if I now set my subdivision level somewhat higher, this is by default, this is set to one. If I set this down to zero, by the way, then it's the equivalent of having this on base resolution. So that'll be the same thing. Subdivision surface level zero means it's not applied. One is the default as it comes in, and it means I'm dividing every polygon once. And that means I get four times the amount of polygons that I had before. And also my computer needs to now work four times as hard as it did before. If I go and set this to subdivision level two, then you'll see that every polygon is divided twice or like every polygon that was already divided is divided again. So now I have 16. Every of my original polygon is now divided into 16 polygons. But of course, as a result, my sphere is extremely high detailed now. And you can go and literally create more subdivision levels if you want, but notice that this will cause your computer to struggle at one point, which is why this toggle is really helpful here. If you go and switch this back to base resolution, all of that is gone and my computer can work freely again without having to calculate and move so much geometry around. And high resolution brings this back. We do actually have two subdivision levels here. We have the sub D level for the view and we have the render sub D level. And usually the render sub D level is one or more higher than what we see in the viewport. So what you could do is you could set the sub D level for the viewport to something rather low rest so that you can move the viewport around. And then when it comes to rendering, you could say, well, this, I want this to be a much higher level. When I say much higher, I'm not talking 10 or 20 or so. I'm talking two or three or four, maybe five at an absolute push, but you've got to have the right hardware for this just so that your render looks that much more high res and that the, the shapes of your characters and your objects and everything else is just so much more high res. At the bottom here, we actually have the algorithm that is being used for this subdivision surface modifier. And you can change that from Catmull Clark to Catmark to Bilinear to Loop. So there are different ways of calculating the same thing if you want to have a play with that. Notice that mostly organic forms like spheres and characters and clothing and so forth, they usually work with subdivision surface modifiers. Other things like buildings and anything that's kind of square and has hard surfaces, that might not be made to have subdivision surface modifiers. I mean, it might, but it might not always work that way. Let me show you an example with another primitive. If I go and bring in my cube friend here, and if you go and look at his geometry, it is literally just six sides or six polygons and we literally have only have eight points here or eight vertices one two three four and then four on the bottom that's literally all we have if i were to try my subdivision surface modifier trick on this guy i'll go under edit object geometry and add my sub d modifier here then look what happens this guy is turning into a kind of a weird sphere now kind of a low rest sphere and that's because the geometry isn't made to hold my original shape in place. This during the 3D modeling process would be done with something like edge loops, that there'd be instead of just the sides, there'd be additional smaller edge loop cuts that would hold this geometry in place if I do apply such a subdivision. Look, if I go and increase this now to level two, I can see that my cube is actually becoming a sphere and a, and a rather handsome one too. Some 3D applications even have special names for these things. I believe in Blender, this thing is called an icosphere, and then this thing would be called a UV sphere. I mean, they're both spheres, they're just made up slightly differently, and the edge loops are in different places and all that. So if I go and switch this guy back to base resolution, you can see that the cube is actually still there, but this additional calculation has really not done this guy any favor. So if you do set up your own subdivision surface modifiers, do think about that. If you have something like an architectural set and you think, I wonder what happens if I apply one there and it completely falls apart, it's just not made for subdivision surface modifier in mind. So I'll go and delete him and go back to my sphere. And let's talk about what this actually means for our characters and when we're working with characters well it means that my genesis figure will look more handsome in the final render as well as in the viewport and that we have more resolution on the character than we'd normally have if we didn't have subdivision so if i go and zoom in on this guy and i switch him from high resolution to base resolution i can see that his ears are getting chunky and that i don't really see that much roundness on the face and there's also detail on the body that i might otherwise not see if it was left in base resolution 
However, base resolution is the amount of polygons that this figure has when we load it in. And it's usually good enough to work with in the viewport, but for the final render and also for lining up things as we work with it, high resolution is preferred. Now notice this implication that has happened here. This is a Genesis 8.1 figure and its default is set to subdivision level 2. As a result, this is now 16 times the amount of polygons that the Genesis base resolution has, even one level higher in the render level as it's set, as it's set up here. And the implication is that it might be difficult for my computer to move my guy around. So if I go and give him a pose. I've got this pose dial here that if I go and left click and drag it, then he goes from the regular A pose into something more of a natural pose that would have him standing regularly still there. So if I do this with the subdivision level, I might find that my computer is struggling a little bit. But if I go and turn this back up to my base resolution level, it might be easier on my computer to do this. Look at the, all the polygons that are disappearing here. So if I go and do that again, I can see that my movement is a little bit more fluid here. If I had a character that also has hair as well as clothing, I'd have a lot more polygons to move. And at that point, any computer might start struggling. Imagine you also had background objects and all that, and you want to make a small change, and you think, hey, I really can't move my figure properly. And this is it's important to remember as we start moving our figures around as we pose them. So if I go and do this now, that we're going to learn more about later, which is kind of the inverse kinematic as we move the characters around. If I do this with the high resolution, I might see that this is just not that easy and I don't get as many frames as I try and do this. And that is why it's a good idea while you work with this, especially on the Genesis 8.1 figures, to switch this to base while you work. The Genesis 8 figures and the 3 and the 2 and the regular Genesis figures, they only had a subdivision level of 1, but the 8.1 figures, they have one of 2. And that is why you might find your computer just has that much of a harder time as you work with it when you're using 8.1 figures. Thankfully, there is the way to switch this over to base resolution, but if you had multiple items in your scene, that might be cumbersome. This is why I use a product actually by 3D Universe that I highly, highly recommend you look into, and I might just go and bring it up on the toolbar here. I have it here up all the time. It's called the Scene Tools Set 1. Let me go and look for that here. It's under utilities. It's actually a set of three things. This one is set two, this is set one, and this is set three. The first one, they all have little icons here that will do various things, one of which will create a little toolbar at the top here. So if I go and double click that, I'll go and see that a portion of my toolbar is now added here. And each set has that. I might just go for completion. I might just go and do this set two. So anything with the orange arrow here will make these little icons appear in my toolbar. And then set three, that's more for posing and for posing tips and tricks. So they're all extremely good. I love them all. And the last icon of the first set here, that will switch all my objects from base to high resolution. Let's just have a look at that. This means it's high resolution. If this has got all the, the many dots here, if I select this, then Dash Studio will go through every item in my scene and make them base resolution. So this is also true for clothing items. And you can see it's actually happened here on the figure. But if we had clothing items and all that, it's really, really easy to just switch everything into base res, then start doing your poses on this character and uh, put them into shape. And then when I'm kind of done, I'll switch it to high resolution and then I'll make the fine adjustments that I need and then we're there. So that's really important to remember when we work with characters and clothing, not so much with hair. Hair sometimes has it, often doesn't. It really depends on the hair, but you can see that the geometry count can literally shoot through the roof if you have everything enabled in high resolution and that'll make your computer struggle and give you a really bad time as you're working with it. So I'm going to make full use of this scene tool set one and I'll switch back and forth between high and base resolution frequently just so that you know what this is. And I highly recommend you work like this as well. In our next episode, we're going to have a look at how we can pose our characters, either with pose presets or with the various, the myriad of tools that we have available inside Dash Studio to make our characters do what we think they should. Stay tuned for that.